Hey, hey, enough. All right, uh, I'm a mess. It's cold out, it's cloudy, it's windy, it's snowy. Today's a maintenance day, so the video is about uh, changing filters. And Odin's gonna sing for you because there's horses around. And every time we go past horses, this is what we get. Hope you enjoy the video. Um, I know a lot of it's really basic, but uh, it might help somebody. You got anything that I'm missing or tips you got for me? I'm more than happy to hear them in the comments. Thanks. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, this is just a quick video about a couple of simple tips to make changing your filters easy. Okay, tip number one. Um, whenever you have a vertical dead up vertical filter like this it's always good practice to fill the new filter with whatever fluid belongs in it before you start um, it just keeps you from getting air gaps and hydraulics that's a hydraulic filter it uh, helps you get your oil system filled up on your oil filters and it'll help you get prevent get uh, getting uh, air into your fuel system for diesels Now, a lot of diesels, matter of fact, most of them that I know, they have two filters. Usually there's one on the engine, like this. And one hiding on, down on the rails, like this. And that probably is about, that's at least two or three quarts of fuel that you're going to put in there. It, it, believe it or not, it's it's quite a bit of fuel, and that kind of air gap in your system means you're going to spend a bit of time bleeding it out, trying to get it right if you let the air get in there, and you can prevent all that headache just by filling the filter. Now, some of these oil filters on these big diesels, bigger diesels, this isn't even really a big diesel, this is only a 3116, but uh, that's like a two and a half quart filter I think I put in it yesterday, it's at least two quarts. But that's a lot of oil to have to fill up before you get your oil system flowing. So you want to really take care to make sure that you can prevent that because any potential for wear and tear is bad. The easiest way i found to fill up the filters is to tear the box off the top off of the filter and put it, the filter upside down in the box and just fill it up. Now this is hydraulic oil. Uh, I use a W22, which is thinner than a lot of oils out there it's thinner than my motor oil for sure far less viscosity um, and even with that thin a material even with the thin a material as diesel when you pour it in you pour in the center and for it to bleed through the filter it takes a little while so your level goes down so you want to be careful not to overfill and you also want to be careful to make sure that you check always before you put your filter on and that you are full. Uh, the other thing, it says it right on the box, and if you've ever changed oil, you should know, is bring that oil, smear it around the lip of the filter, so that way you get a good seam seal. I always find it's best to have the, the new filter right close and handy to where you're filling, where you're changing the filter, if you can, because you don't know what kind of fluid leaks you're gonna end up getting out of the system from removing the old filter and it can be substantial a drip pan nearby is always helpful so that uh, you can just drop the old filter in there and let it drain all right I know again I know a lot of these are kind of intuitive but uh, if I could save somebody a little bit of headache I'm hoping to um, Another good tip is when you have more than one filter that you're doing, only fill one at a time and make it the one that you're going to use immediately next. Uh, it cuts down on the accidental knocking over of a filter filled with oil or hydraulic fluid or diesel or even potentially gasoline. It just saves a lot of mess. And don't fill filters until you're ready to use them. I like to crack the old filter first and get it loose. Then I come back and fill the filter, and I do a one, uh, you know, I do the drop and replace in a one, two, three swing. Um, I just found that to be the neatest, easiest way, and it cuts down on 
spillage, which I talk about from experience. I'm sure everybody's knocked over something before in their shop. Anyway. Okay, I know this one is really elemental, but uh, you know, you'd be surprised. But now, why make your work any more difficult than it needs to be? If you have these interior fender skirts, take them out so that you can work right on top, get right into your work without any obstructions. Make your life as easy as possible. If you can set your filters up on an angle to drain and leave them for a while, you'll get a lot more oil out of them. And uh, it's a lot less messy when you have to deal with them later. And I always do my fuel filters last because the diesel from the filter helps clean out all the heavier oils from my drain pans and buckets. I always have a spare bucket around and when I'm done doing my oil changes I put all of my oil in a bucket I'll swap the lid from the new bucket over drain that as best I can of oil uh, uh, the new bucket of oil put the cap on the old bucket and I can take it to where I buy my oil and you can return your oil in my state to the seller of motor oil when you're working on systems that have multiple filters in line, in particular fuel systems, I found this to be the case uh, on diesels. This one has the fuel filter again on the engine, and it has one down here on the rail. It helps a lot and makes your life a little bit easier if you do the filter closest to the tank first, then run your truck to make sure there's no problems with it then do the filter on the engine, then run your truck again to make sure there are no problems. Now this is a multiple uh, issue thing that I do. Number one is if you start with the one on the rail which is closest to the engine on this particular truck, when you're drawing fuel you're not drawing old fuel through a new filter. And when you run it you're drawing fuel directly from the tank into a new filter and then you're getting rid of all the old fuel between that filter and the old filter that's still on on the engine. Then you can get rid of the filter that's on the engine and change that out. The other thing is, is if you have a problem with the filter, an air leak or something that's causing your fuel system not to function properly, properly from changing your filters, you can isolate it before you have multiple filters in, giving you less things to check. Always go through with your engine running and inspect your filter for leaks and drips. <laughs> this is really important. And it's easy to go, easiest to go through as you change them and take a look. And that also puts you in a situation again where you don't have to chase a million things down. You can do one thing and do it right. Systems are particularly important for that with diesels because if you don't do your fuel system, you'll end up on a road with an air leak in your fuel system and be dead in the water. And you can't just put more fuel in, you're going to end up having to prime the engine and all that purge the air out of the lines. With hydraulic systems, you always want to be very cautious with leaks. In this particular case, a leak could result in misting or spraying on the exhaust, and it's been my experience, and it's a story for another time, but it's been my experience that misting, really fine mists of hydraulic oil can become extremely flammable. Um, there's also what's called hydraulic poisoning from high pressure hydraulics, like the lines for the cylinders and all, where the Hydraulics can come through a pinhole and inject itself under your skin. You get hydraulic poisoning, you've got to get to the hospital immediately. It's going to kill the tissue. It potentially can kill you if you don't get it treated immediately. And it does not matter where on your body it is, it will kill you if you don't get it taken care of immediately. So that's kind of important.
important. But like I said, check for leaks in every system. Alright, this is one last tip. Uh, this is like a real old school thing. It's the first time you did your filters, save your filter tops. Um, usually you can't write on the outside of the box, it's waxy. On the inside you write what filter it was and what it's for, like this one says oil. But underneath it you see where it says Napa 1791. That was the filter that I took out, which was Napa. And you start building a cross-reference in case you can't get the filter of your preferred type. Again, the rail fuel was a Napa fuel filter, but now it's Fram. The hydraulic filter was actually a Baldwin BT839-10. Now it is a Fram, and this was an engine uh, fuel the um, engine mounted fuel filter was a Napa 2 and now it's a Fram. So anyway you start building a catalog. My old shop used to be right by a Napa so it was very easy to get them and it, well, you know it, we always use the Napa filters. Um, now except where we couldn't, where we couldn't get a Napa filter for the hydraulics of course because that's why we have the Bolden, but now I am not near a Napa, so I have the cross-reference handy for all my filters. If there's, if I need to do filters, I know the numbers I can just go get and make it very easy on myself. Um, where this does come in handy, when you start generating a, a lot of bigger equipment with a lot of filters, just to do this truck alone, the filters alone are like 75 bucks. So, you know, if you can find them on sale every now and then, get them. Or if you can get, like, say, I get Napa's cheaper. Napa's having a big sale. I'll go get Napa filters for this truck. And I already know what the number is. And uh, just one of those things to make your life a little bit easier.